Good morning and welcome to worship here at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. I'm Michelle Lewis and I'm the pastor here at Bread of Life. Welcome. Hello, I'm Dorothy Sparks. I'm a deacon here at Bread of Life. Welcome to worship with us. And I'm David Evans, ASL interpreter. Dorothy saying, good morning. Welcome to Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church. Today is April 18th, which is the third Sunday of Easter. We're going to continue celebrating Easter for four more weeks. Michelle is saying, throughout Easter, we will continue to proclaim, yes, Christ is alive. Alleluia. So, if you have some confetti that you made when you tore up your paper chains, and I'll show you mine. Got it here in this handy little jar. You can take your torn up paper chain confetti and every time we say Alleluia, throw some confetti in the air. Dorothy. Today in worship, we will finish the Gospel of Luke. The writer of Luke also wrote the Book of Acts. So, as we end Luke, we're going to turn our attention to Acts and see how the story continues. Michelle, Jesus breaks the chains of death. And so death is not the end of the story. But we know that the effects of death still influence our world. This last week here in Minnesota, it feels like we are in the midst of death. As we witnessed another black man murdered by the police. We honor Dante Wright We are heartbroken again that there is so much left to do to make the world more just and more loving. Dorothy. We wait and we wonder with the disciples. How does resurrection change our lives now? How does the promise of the Holy Spirit change our lives now? It is our prayer that worship here at Bread of Life, Deaf Lutheran Church, will help you to experience Easter while we struggle to create justice and peace and to share God's love.
Pastor Michelle is saying, and now it's time to light a candle. So wherever you are, if you have a candle available, please join Deacon Dorothy and I as we light ours. Today's gospel lesson is from Luke 24, verses 36 through 53. While Jesus' disciples were talking about what had happened, Jesus appeared to them and greeted them. They were frightened and terrified because they were seeing a ghost, because they thought they were seeing a ghost. But Jesus said, why are you so frightened? Why do you doubt? Look at my hands and my feet and see who I am. Touch me and find out for yourselves. Ghosts don't have flesh and bones, as you see, I have. After Jesus said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. The disciples were so glad and amazed that they could not believe it. Jesus asked them, do you have something to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate as they watched. Jesus said to them, While I was with you, I told you that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the books of the prophets, and in the Psalms had to happen. Then he helped them understand the scriptures. He told them, Scriptures say that the Messiah must suffer. Then three days later, he will rise from death. They also say that all people of every nation must be told in my name to turn to God in order to be forgiven. So beginning in Jerusalem, you must tell everything that has happened. And I will send you the one my father promised. But you must stay in this city until you are given power from heaven. Jesus led his disciples out to Bethany, where he raised his hands and blessed them. As he was doing this, he left and was taken up to heaven. After his disciples had worshipped him, they returned to Jerusalem and were very happy. They spent their time in the temple praising God.
Christ is risen. Congregation, Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. God has broken the chains of death forever. Alleluia. Congregation, let our praises ring. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always, congregation, and also with you. Prayer for the day. Everlasting God, because your love for the world is endless, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer on the cross so that we might live. Empower us to share this good news with all of your creation, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. My friends, <clears throat> I want to take a couple minutes today to introduce the Bible lessons and talk about them a little bit, um, mainly because my sermon will be more of a meditation not really directly about our Bible lessons today. But I want to say a couple of things. So we have two Bible lessons today. We have the one that Dorothy shared right at the beginning of worship, which is the end of the Gospel of Luke. And then after this little message from me, uh, Dorothy will share um, the first part of the book of Acts. I wanted to include the end of the gospel because we've been studying Luke since Christmas. And uh, it felt a little bit weird to not include the end of it. And at the end of the gospel of Luke, we find that Jesus leaves the graveyard and joins his friends as they are trying to understand and accept what seems like defeat. But Jesus leaves the graveyard as a whole resurrected person. He leaves walking and talking, eating and blessing people. And so we see that death is not the end of the story. And really, resurrection, that's not the end of the story either, because at the end of Luke, we see Jesus ascends into heaven and is reunited with God in heaven and then sends the Holy Spirit to us. And then, th that's not the end either, right? That's not the end of the story. It continues on. Because the Jesus' disciples keep telling this story about Jesus. Those followers long, long ago who actually walked and talked and ate with Jesus. And now us later disciples, other followers like us who have trusted Jesus. And we walk and talk and eat with Jesus. 
not in person, but through the power of the Holy Spirit. The story doesn't end with death. And so we keep trusting and watching and telling these stories of how God leads us, of where God is moving in the world, and when God brings new life out of death. Death is not the end of the story. And so this is why I wanted to include the beginning of the book of Acts as well. Because the book of Acts keeps telling this story. It shows death is not the end. And for you and I, when we trust that God will bring new life out of death, we look for God. We seek for God. We watch for and we listen to and we join in what God is doing. We share this promise that death is not the end. God does not give up on us. Instead, God keeps loving us. God keeps showing up and promising to be with us. Even in the midst of upheaval and of unrest in our cities, in the midst of grief and loss, and when we have no idea what's going to come next. This is the promise of those Bible lessons we have in our worship today. So I wanted to make sure to say that because like I said in my sermon, I'm going to talk about something different. So. That's all for now. <laughs> and now, Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. This is the beginning of the book of Acts. Luke writes, The first book I wrote was about everything Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day he was carried up into heaven. But before Jesus was taken up, he gave orders to the chosen apostles with the help of the Holy Spirit. For 40 days after Jesus had suffered and died, he proved in many ways that he had been raised from death. He appeared to his apostles, and he spoke to them about God's kingdom. While he was still with them, he said, Don't leave Jerusalem yet. Wait here for the Father to give you the Holy Spirit, just as I told you he has promised to do. John baptized with water. But in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. While the apostles were still with Jesus, they asked him, Lord, are you now going to give Israel its own king again? 
Jesus said to them, You don't need to know the time of those events that only the Father controls. But the Holy Spirit will come upon you and will give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and everywhere in the world. After Jesus had said this, and while they were watching, he was taken up into a cloud. They could not see him, but as he went up, they kept looking in the sky. Suddenly, two men dressed in white clothes were standing beside them. They said, Why are you men from Galilee standing here and looking up into the sky? Jesus has been taken back into heaven, but he will come back in the same way you have seen him go. Word of God, word of life. Amen. My friends, peace be with you from God. I will admit to you, um, I feel a little bit like a year ago is happening again. Um, as I sat down to figure out what to share today, <laughs> I was a little dumbfounded and so i borrowed some uh, meditation and devotion from a colleague to try to help us think through how our faith will help us during these these days when um I, as i said earlier another black man was killed by the police um, this man's name is duante Wright, and so we need to take time to remember him uh though we didn't know him but to remember his life and to honor him and to wrestle with how our faith can help us advocate for changes so that we don't keep having these tragedies, these senseless um, actions that take life, that they don't keep happening. So today, you might feel like I do, uh, fairly discouraged terribly discouraged and depressed, overwhelmed, and sort of like, will it help if I do anything? And our faith, our faith was made for times like this, when that's how we feel. Because through our faith, we can admit that we sin, that we act individually, we act in ways um, against one another. But then really as a whole society, as a world, we have actions and behaviors that give some people privilege. Well, other people are hurt. And that sin that we have can be toxic. It can act like poison in our life together. And it leads to violence. It leads to us hurting one another. And so our faith can help us because our faith helps us to notice human flaws 
our tendency to say, oh, my problems are worse than yours. My issues are, are more important than yours. And to then use that to justify being selfish and to be dishonest. Now, this is not new behavior because the Bible tells lots and lots of stories that talk about these kinds of human flaws. We go way back to the beginning and you find the brothers Cain and Abel. Cain is terribly jealous of his brother Abel, terribly jealous. And instead of thinking about like, why am I feeling jealous? Why am I, why do I want what he has? Cain just goes ahead and kills his brother. That's way at the very beginning of the Bible, way at the very beginning of the story of what people have been doing all along. So instead of like looking at ourselves and understanding ourselves, we just act out our anger. There's another long and famous story in the Bible about twin brothers, Jacob and Esau, and all through their life, from the time that the babies are in the womb until they die, Jacob is trying to get what Esau has. He's trying to steal everything his brother has, including the blessing from the father. And that blessing came with like land and animals and power and privilege. And later we see the story of Sarah and Abraham as they're trying to have a baby. And they're both Sarah and Abraham kind of, they manipulate things. And Sarah convinces Abraham to sleep with the household slave whose name is Hagar, right? And Hagar becomes pregnant. And then Sarah is terribly jealous and sends Hagar out in the wilderness to die. And Abraham agrees with it. And as we look to the New Testament too, we find Jesus' disciples trying to figure out who is more important, who's higher up, who's closer to God, who's got more power. And so you see the Bible has loads of stories of how we people have these flaws. And how that leads us toward violence and toward um, systems that say some people are more important than others. And here in the United States, skin color really is that defining characteristic. If you have light colored skin, then you're, you're fairly safe. If your skin color is darker, you are susceptible, you're suspected of all sorts of flaws. So our faith can help us admit that we people have all kinds of flaws. And then at the same time, our faith helps us to say, oh, but wait, we are also created good. Because when you look way back at the beginning, God created the world and called it good. And so we people 
are created good. And in fact, we're capable of doing great good, often in spite of ourselves. And the Bible includes the story about Joseph and his brothers in which good comes out of those brothers kidnapping and trying to murder Joseph. Because Joseph ends up in Egypt and ends up helping save all kinds of people through a famine. So our faith helps us understand that yes, we're flawed and admit that. And also to understand that in fact, God created us good. And our faith gives us a gift of reconciliation, of asking for forgiveness and repenting of our sins and of changing life. Because really through our faith, we are changed. Through our faith, we begin to see all those other people as our siblings, as our family, as people capable and deserving of our kindness. And in fact, as people for whom we would be willing to die. That's what our faith does for us. So as we feel utterly discouraged, we can lean on our faith because we are living in the midst of societal reckoning, a time of confronting wrongs and sins in our society. And that has consequences for everyone, but especially for those of us who are white. Because we have lived in this society having all kinds of advantages and privileges based on the history of our country, based on that the United States had slavery from the very beginning. And we created laws, we created a justice system, we created policing, all of those things were created and influenced by the idea that people with light colored skin are more valuable than black and brown people. We are living through a time of significant societal change of confronting those sins. Again, it has to happen again. It doesn't just happen once and then it's fixed, but it has to happen again and again and again. And for those of us who are white, we can't undo what our ancestors did. But we can learn about how we benefit even now. And that learning can be challenging. As we talked about a year ago, it can be so hard to confront these, the things that benefit us. And then to say, wait a minute, that's not fair. 
and to then be advocates to say, that's not fair, it's not okay. We need to speak up and help make change happen. And that's where our faith can help us. We can lean on our faith. We can lean on those gifts that our faith can give to us. Gifts like forgiveness. And being humble enough to ask someone to forgive. And taking a step to change our lives so we're not hurting others. So that's one way we can lean on our faith is to decide to use and ask for forgiveness. Another way would be to make life better for someone else, right? That we can write a letter or a postcard, write a note to one of our elected officials and ask them to work on an issue that we're passionate about. And in this case, to ask them, how are we confronting racism in our town or in our state or in our country? So we can ask for forgiveness. We can make life better for someone else. We can pray. We can pray for our black and our brown neighbors, for families of people who have been killed, um, in particular for Duante Wright's family, or for George Floyd's family. but also for the police, for the first responders, for those people who put themselves in dangerous situations. So I don't know about you, but I feel pretty discouraged these days. And so it is my prayer that each of us can lean on our faith. And that we bring our discouragement to God. And that we are brave to take a step, to practice our faith and to rely on it. So that life can be better for everyone. Amen. Prayers of the People.
Lord Jesus Christ, you conquered death. You rose from the dead and are alive forevermore. Help us remember and experience your loving presence with us. Help us remember you are with us. Whenever we feel confused and overwhelmed, you are here to guide and direct us. Whenever we feel sorrow, you are here to comfort and counsel us. Whenever we feel tempted, you are here to strengthen and to inspire us. Whenever we feel lonely, you are here to encourage us and befriend us. Whenever we or our loved ones encounter death, you bring all of us to glory on the other side of this life. Help us remember and live so that the hope of resurrection will show through our lives. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Congregation, and also with you. Please share a sign of God's peace with one another. My friends, we do celebrate Easter this amazing promise that death is not the end of the story. And here at Bread of Life, God calls us to share this hope and promise with the deaf community and with their loved ones. And what in the world is that hope and the promise? It's this, God loves you. And so to do this work, we need some money. We need money to do it. And so we ask you to give generously. We ask that if you're able to, please send a check to Bread of Life. We do check our mailbox often every week, or you can use an online giving option. And you can find all the information you need, our mailing address and the online options on our website, and that website address is www.breadoflifedeaf.org. Thank you for sharing generously with Bread of Life. Offering prayer. God, you come to us. Now receive these gifts and our lives. Congregation, we lift our hearts to you as you lifted Jesus up from the grave. Through Jesus, bring everything from bondage to freedom, from death to life. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks 
to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy that we should everywhere and always give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. We give thanks for Jesus. He is the true Lamb of peace and gives himself freely to create peace between us and God. We give thanks with Mary Magdalene, with Peter, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection. We give thanks with the earth and sea and sky and all the creatures. We give thanks with the angels and archangels all in heaven. We give thanks and we praise your name. And we join in their unending hymn. We invite you to sign along. This will not be voiced. On Jesus' last night, when he gathered together to eat with his friends and followers, he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread, thanked God, blessed it, and broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, thanked God, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new agreement in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We invite you to join the, sign the Lord's Prayer with us. Now, let us celebrate this Easter day. Come, enjoy God's gifts and God's food. You are all invited to this table because this table belongs to God and we are honored to share it with anyone who desires to feast. When you serve one another with the bread, please use language body of Christ given for you. And with the cup, 
blood of Christ shed for you. And for those of you who might be by yourselves, allow me to administer the bread and the cup for you now. Body of Christ, given for you. Blood of Christ, shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Friends, today I changed out our sending prayer. Um, every day I get um, prayers against racism from the United Methodist Church. And I thought today's prayer was helpful. So let us pray. God of peace and healing, we come to you feeling powerless to stop the hatred that divides our country that divides races and nations. We come to you saddened and angered that people and their rights are not honored here in our country. We come to you with wounds deep in our hearts that we long to have healed. We come to you with all the struggles in our personal lives that just don't go away. And we pray how long Lord, how long until peace? And we hear a response that says, not long, because we are always, although slowly, we are always bending toward justice every day a little more closer to justice and we pray lord how long how long for racial justice and we hear a response of not long, because no lie, no untruth can live forever. We pray, Lord, how long, how long for our wounded hearts And we hear a response that says, not long, because I call you by name. You are with me. You are mine. And 
And we pray, how long for our struggles, Lord? How long? And we hear a response that says, not long. For my grace is enough. I hold you in my arms and you cannot fall. And still we pray, Lord, how long? How long for the healing of what is broken inside of us? and all around us. And we receive a response that says, not long, for we shall overcome together in partnership. This human, holy partnership together we shall overcome. And then sending. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Congregation, Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. You are Christ's body. Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share God's good news that God loves you. Congregation, thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. <laughs>